Many of us were taught that the standard atomic weights we found in the backs of our chemistry textbooks or on the periodic table of the chemical elements hanging on the wall of our chemistry classroom are constants of nature. This was common knowledge for more than a century and a half, but not anymore. In the 1930s, it was discovered that there were variations in the fraction of stable, that is, non-radioactive, isotopes of carbon and oxygen in naturally occurring materials. In 1951, identification of variations in abundances of sulfur isotopes in normal materials was sufficiently large that an uncertainty value was attached to the standard atomic weight of sulfur. These variations in isotopic abundances of stable isotopes in normal materials give rise to variations in standard atomic weights of the elements. Because of variations in physical and chemical properties of the isotopes of an element, isotopic abundances and atomic weights of that element will vary in normal materials. For example, the atomic weight of oxygen varies in precipitation, groundwater, and river water around the world. To measure isotopic abundances and thus determine atomic weights in gases, solids, and liquids, we use an isotope ratio mass spectrometer. Jacqueline Benefield is loading water samples in an isotope ratio mass spectrometer to determine their oxygen isotopic compositions. We use a trick and equilibrate carbon dioxide with each of the water samples. Then the carbon dioxide is analyzed with the isotope ratio mass spectrometer. Once the oxygen isotopic composition of a specimen has been determined, the atomic weight is easily calculated from the relative atomic masses of the stable isotopes of the element oxygen-16, oxygen-17, and oxygen-18 for oxygen atomic weights. Stable isotope measurements of many elements, including hydrogen, lithium, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and chlorine, are used in anthropology, atmospheric sciences, biology, chemistry, environmental sciences, food and drug authentication, forensic applications, geochemistry, geology, oceanography, and paleoclimatology, to name a few sciences. One of the challenges in the IPTEI that we needed to overcome was showing how to make a chart of 40 to 50 radioactive and stable isotopes for each of the 118 chemical elements. Imagine having to do that manually. It would give you a, a very bad headache. So I'm the corresponding author for this document. Um, but initially, my job was application research. I feel that the biggest challenges I faced in helping with this document were uh, finding images, at least one per element. I started working on the IPTEI in April 2016, um, assisting Lauren with compiling the terms for the glossary and creating some of the definitions for the glossary. Over the last few years, I've also replotted and created numerous figures, which are present in the element-by-element element review. Another issue I had was keeping reference links live. So we didn't want to produce a document that users couldn't just find the references we were pulling from to get more information. One of the surprises during the 10-year preparation of the IUPAC Periodic Table of the Elements and Isotopes for the Educational Community was that the number of chemical elements having a single stable isotope dropped from 20 to 19. In the 2009 Table of Standard Atomic Weights, bismuth is identified as an element with one stable isotope. But in the 2011 table, bismuth is identified as an element having no stable isotopes, and its mass number, 209, changed from black to red to indicate this isotope is radioactive. Bismuth has only radioactive isotopes like radium and uranium, and the isotope bismuth-209 has a long half-life greater than the age of the Earth that characterizes its standard atomic weight.